going to be cool. <laughs> the topics and opinions expressed on the Dudes and Beer podcast are intended for an audience of 18 and up and are solely those of the host and guests. They neither reflect the opinions or values of either the sponsors of Dudes and Beer or your mother. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard these guys? They'll talk about anything. Whoa, whoa, hey, you think they're going to show it? <laughs> uh, they'll probably just blur it out. <laughs> whoa, check it out, Beavis. Grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beef. That's right, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Dudes and Beer. I am Chris Jordan, your host. With me, as always, is Stephen Bishop and Nelson yeah. Kugel. What up? Uh, with us also on the phone this evening for the first part of the show is Sean Tajapur of West Houston Muscle. Oh, shit. We'll be talking about the upcoming Blast to the Past cruising going Woo! on yeah. out, at the Skeeter, awesome. out at the Skeeter Stadium in Sugarland coming up next Saturday, skate, August 13th. Skate. From uh, 6.30 to 10.30 p.m., so uh, we'll be talking about that and everything else going on. We will be out there hosting that event live as well. We came in with a little listen to music by the Doobie Boys, Doobie Brothers tonight, because tonight <laughs> is the first vinyl night. Nelson has brought his vinyl album yeah. tonight. We will be listening to um, an awesome album by a facer called The Music for Noise Reduction, yeah. and we will get into all of this and more right after we get back from this message from our sponsor. Hey, are you a musician? Do you play guitar, bass, or synthesizers? Are you a studio engineer looking for that different sound? Well, fret no longer. Austin Hot Mods is there for you. From Boss to Ibanez, DoD to EHX and more, Austin Hot Mods provides over 50 different modifications and customizations to some of the most popular guitar pedals on the market, from vintage to modern. So if you're looking for that boutique custom sound on a Craigslist budget, look no further. Contact Austin Hot Mods today and mention that you heard it here on the Dudes and Beer podcast for 5% off your first guitar pedal modification. Visit them online at austinhotmods.com. Texas owned and operated and home of the Mod of the Month deal. That website again is austinhotmods.com. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. And with us on the phone is Sean Tajapur. How are you doing this evening, man? Hey, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, wow. hey what's up, Sean? Yeah, man. Well, tell everybody a little bit about West Houston Muscle, the car club, and what it's all about. Ow! Yeah, West Houston Muscle is now Houston's one of the largest clubs out here in Houston, about 1,800 members. It's just for all types of enthusiasts. So if you have something or you don't, it doesn't matter if you like cars, regardless of the type, but we're mostly muscle, classic, and hot rods. Anything you like, uh, just we like to hang out with people, and we've been around for about seven years now, putting on some pretty awesome events out here in Houston. Yeah, oh, and, and yeah. y'all put on all kinds of stuff. Y'all do like coffee and cars out at the out at Memorial City Mall. I saw, you know, just y'all are all over the place there in West Houston. And on a regular basis, how frequently are y'all doing events? We try to do something once a month, and then we have at least maybe twice a month because we have our Thursday night hangouts mm -hmm. or we'll caravan to another event. We like doing stuff together if we're not doing our own thing or go support other local shows sure but we like to do something for ourselves maybe twice a month or so and just anything that pops up it's a little hot right now so it's not as you know busy for us right now but once it cools down we like getting those cars out yeah. oh yeah most definitely totally now agree. you were talking a little bit about your collection before we came on air tell everybody what you're riding in these days yeah so my classics that i have i have 132 pontiac five window coupe that i actually bought from um, richard rawlings of fast and loud um gas monkey guys Maybe nice. four oh, years yeah. ago. Nice. Guess monkey. Yeah. So that was on episode three, I believe, of the first season of me purchasing that vehicle from Oh, them. wow, wow. Great. Awesome. Yeah, and then my second one is a 68 Plymouth Starlight, and it's actually a police car replica. And it does have a box of donuts in it. Actually, a few boxes. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Edible at all times? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Glazed. Now, and, and you also have a couple more modern vehicles as well. That yeah, you, that so you cruise my in. modern muscle car is an 06 GTO with the Corvette LS2 engine with about 410 horsepower in that. 
Yes, sir. And then Good my motor. daily beast is a uh, 06 limited edition uh, H2 with limited edition like uh, color and interior and everything. So that's pretty cool. I like that LS2 motor you got that in there, man. Those yeah, are, those uh, are great I love blocks. it too. <laughs> it goes. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Power. Yeah. yeah. What kind of uh, ECU are you running on that LS2? I just have a Diablo um, tune on that, really, pretty much. Dope. So, yeah, that's all I did is that. And it's pretty much stock. So it's fun. It's a lot of torque, a lot of horsepower. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that, those blocks are so easy to work on, man. Yeah, there's guys that pull over 600 horsepower from that oh, yeah. block. Most definitely. I've seen people expand those blocks. I've seen them bore them out uh, to four out over, uh, put blowers on them, turbos. I mean, the LS2 yeah. is just a great motor. Yeah, you can't go wrong with an LS engine. L yeah. Hells yes. <laughs> Hells yes. Yeah, right? Hells yes. Well, and on that note, talking about things that have a lot of horsepower and really go places, let's talk a little bit about this upcoming Blast, blast to the Past cruise-in that's going on. Tell us a little bit about that, Sean. Yeah, this is our eighth uh, event for Blast to the Past. It's actually a nighttime show. That's the fun part of it. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a nighttime roundup. It's, uh, it's August. It's warm, but it cools off a little bit in the evening. So it's a great roundup of enthusiasts from all over Texas. Just there means the ladies are going to wear less. Well, so and, that's cool. And, and we're looking at we're looking at the guys. Yeah. Oh, at, is there guys? Oh my god! From from what uh, yeah. I've seen on the flyers and everything else, we're Smells looking at taste. We're looking at right up around a thousand cars. You know, yeah. something like that. We pushed a lot of cars in the past. Um, now, we, how, we stopped counting. I mean, there's just so yeah. many cars come through. How long does it normally take for that cruise in to actually make it into the parking lot and you know settle down? Because that's so, that's quite yeah, a look at, that's quite an undertaking. A lot of cars. Yeah. Yeah. So probably around nine o'clock. Wow. It starts. So that's like the silent time where it's calm. You know, that's when it's calm and everyone's in wow. and settled and everything. Crazy. Dope. And Very we dope. are so entirely excited about oh, coming fuck. out, being yeah, a part yeah. of this. Sounds awesome. Doing doing a couple a, a couple forty five minute live broadcast from the site. You know, Ow. talking talking to not only Sean again. Um, a little bit more in depth, but also the people from Bubera Performance, who are the major sponsor of the event. How long have you been tied in with them, Sean? With Bubera, they are a great, awesome NASCAR racing mm -hmm. family that they've been around for a while. And I've met them pretty much when I started because they're a local shop just close to home. And I talked yeah. to them, you know, if they wanted to help us out and do some things with us. And they jumped on board and we do a lot of stuff with them. And That's they do great. a lot of event sponsorship for us so we can provide awesome events for a lot of the enthusiasts in town so they've been very supportive and they have a lot of awesome cars i must say and they build some awesome hot rods that, cool. they, they really do i used to actually live in old katy and i used to love to just go walk around boom Bear. um the stuff that is out there is absolutely amazing yeah and they have a lot of unique rides right now they they're they have a fully blown custom um maybe a 60 something camaro that's ready for the track nice. they have a 67, I think, Mustang they're working on. And one of the cars they have actually for the shop cars is a 30, maybe a 32 Ford Rat Rod. Oh, wow. What nice. a right hand Rat drive. Rod. You had me at 32 Ford. Now, will they be bringing mm -hmm. any of those out to the show? They should be bringing out. I'm not Sweet. sure what's on their list, but they have a lot to choose from. I know they have Casey Kane's Sprint Cup car from 2008 they like to show off. Nice. That's really cool to see an actual NASCAR vehicle. Yeah, Casey Kane. Get to see those close up. Right, nice. and probably uh, a few other radical rides and really cool stuff. Well, that is know. great. Well, before we let you go, please let all of the listeners know one more time all of the details on the event, where it is, what time it is, and you know how to get there. Yeah, so Blast Up Pass is happening on August thirteenth, so it's a couple of Saturdays, and then we got from six thirty to, to ten thirty is when the event is, and it's a thousands of cars. It's the best place to meet other enthusiasts and check out the cars. And it's happening at Constellation Field in Sugarland, Texas, where the Skeeters play. And you can get all the information on our website, westhoustonmuscle.com, or on Facebook, West Houston Muscle. Or you can go to whmblastofthepast.com that has all the information as well. Fantastic. So, well, Sean, thanks so yeah. much for taking the time to stop by this evening. We, yes, thank you. We yeah, thanks, cannot, Sean. cannot, Glad cannot wait you. until next Saturday. It's going to be yeah, it'll so be great much to fun. have you all out there. I appreciate it. It's always yeah. a, hey, a fun time talking to you all. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, dude. You have a great evening, and make sure to tune in and catch this great, great album, uh, yes. Music for Noise Reduction by Effacer, the artist. So okay. we're going to get into that right now. Once again, Sean, thanks so much for joining us. You take care, buddy. See you all, too. All right, bye-bye. So, thank you so much for Sean Tajapur of West Houston Muscle for coming on, explaining to everybody yeah. what the Blast to the Past cruise in is really all about. 
um, what this upcoming show next Saturday is all about. It's going right. to be super fun, man. Oh, yeah. It's going to be so much fun. Like, we had such an amazing, amazing time the two days at the Mikamoto auction, dude. Yeah. It was, it was incredible. Like, I'm tingling right now just thinking about the possibilities and, like, the fun stuff that we're going to get to see and do oh, with man, the show. Oh, I'm stoked as yeah. hell. Yeah. MCing up on stage, all that bad kind of fun ass, stuff. So it's going to be super great. Well, yeah. let's, let's, break be a fun in, event. let's break into this album a little bit. Now, oh, right. whenever we started this show, it's interesting because last week we came in with a different version of a song that we started the whole show with. Right. Um, right Place, Wrong Time. And you were on probably episode three of this podcast, Nelson. I think so. Um, I think that's a... It was three or four. You yeah. were right there in the beginning. And it was yeah. right as you joined this vinyl club. Right. And uh, started getting a vinyl a month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a vinyl freak. I'm an analog freak. You know that. We've made music together. And, uh, you know, you started talking about this album by a facer. Right. And it was, it was absolutely amazing. You were like, oh, my God, dude, it's just mind-blowing. It's great. And it's been a year, and I, I haven't had a chance to listen to it until today. Um, you dropboxed me the files last night that you'd captured, and, you know, it's, it's really an interesting piece of music. Um, here is the rundown. It's a Music for Noise Reduction is the album. It came out February 7th of 2012 by an artist named Facer. Now, here's the concept of the album. The album was inspired by the commercial work a Facer does in, as, in audio mastering. The Facer determined that different noise reduction processes and audio restoration tools used, used to remove clicks and noises from tracks could be used to exaggerate different effects in music. He started taking a reverb sound, then used the dry version of the same sound, sans reverb, as the noise print for a new noise reduction algorithm. Thus, by removing the source sound, this process would leave behind a ghostly, quote-unquote, metaverb, Inspired by this new discovery, Effacer developed a formula to create more sounds and textures. Basically, the formula works like this, folks. Source sound plus effect minus source sound equals artifact of effect. Right. Which, you know, if you think about it, really, it's kind of the same concept as noise-canceling headphones, right. you know? They're capturing, like, the noise that we're hearing right now, and, and then they're going to feed in the, uh, the 180 degree right. opposite frequency uh, right now what he's done is actually take these sounds that were left from reverbed tracks that were reduced down and he's taken out the part that you normally consider desirable and subtracted that and left the artifact that you're normally trying to get rid of and, and like for me as a musician that does this kind of stuff as somebody that plays more in the realm of texture and sound and sonic than melody and harmony um it's beautiful right it's absolutely amazing i've got to say i've probably listened to this album a good 10 i mean we listened to it twice right while we were hanging out yes, today it's good um it's and i listened to it like easily a good 11 dozen times today i've listened to this album and i, I mean i'm literally shaking right now i'm so excited nelson go ahead go ahead well what i you know you could I mean, you could read this and people are kind of some of some of our listeners might be a little confused on how the sound effects plus effects minus the sound source creates this kind of music. The best way I can kind of put it is if you remember uh, uh, James Bond, I think it was uh, the Quantum Solace where he had the car that had all the cameras yeah. on the outside and the cameras looked at what it was seeing what, what and was reflected behind it. In yeah. it into, and yeah. that's how he made his car invincible. So if you take uh, yeah, yeah. what the car, it, or if you take what you're seeing and project it back to you and then subtract that and to make it to where all of that is behind you, that's kind of how this music is. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, that's another way to put wow. it. That's well, another way to think about it. I like well, that. I like let's, that. Yeah. Let's get into the first track. The first track Can't is about three minutes and 52 seconds. It's called Study One. So let's listen to the first few seconds, uh, the first little bit of it, and then we'll come in and we'll talk about it a little bit.
my God, man. Just the sustain of that note, just the tension held in that note is right. absolutely amazing. And, it's and, beyond amazing. And, and that's what I love about this. The album itself yeah. is so entirely textural. Um, that's the first time I heard this. I know y'all been listening to it all day or whatnot or a lot. Uh, and man, it's interesting it's, to have a first timer's yeah, opinion. That, yeah, that was the first time I've heard this. Um, it sounds very underwaterish, you know, like you're underwater. That's what I said. And, that's and, exactly, yeah, and, and that's exactly what you said earlier. Yeah. Right? If I had to imagine that and put it in the words, that's how I would describe it. Well, as this song goes on, I felt like when I was listening to this for the first time, like you, is I felt like I was listening to a band. If, like through three walls. Yeah. Like if I had three walls that were like really shitty insulated. Yeah. Like what we hear like, here sometimes. Right. Like in the that's cave. Exactly. Yeah. That's how I feel yeah. when that person Absolutely. Because, because sure, on occasion right? you hear Palm Days yeah. recording or pra rehearsing over there and they do a lot of esoteric synth stuff and things like that. Yeah. And yeah. You know, you it definitely has that quality. Almost, to it. almost like kind of weird sounds you would hear from like whales or something like when you're trying to record whales or something too. Also. Yeah, I mean not and exactly, but you know it's it's very in the ballpark. And like I was explaining earlier, it's it's aleatoric. Yeah. Like aleatoric is where someone would take just sounds and bleeps and make music out of it. And essentially, that's what Epheser is doing. I for, yeah, uh, Epheser or Epheser. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce Craig, it. Craig, what was his first name? Mark? Um, um, uh, Michael. Mike. I, I believe. Hold Mike. on. Let me make sure I've got that actually written yeah, right here. I should know this. In the, uh, in the, in the notes. Um, oh, actually, it's, no. I, re no, it's, I replaced it. It's John McCraig. John McCraig. John McCraig. And that's yeah. kind of what he's doing. Yeah. Is, is he's developing an esoteric kind of sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But making music out of it. Yeah. And that's what aleatoric music is. Like, the definition of aleatoric, like, is... Taking dissonance and making order out of it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and another way to explain aleatoric is if you're at a... Yeah. End of track one. I know. It's and incredible. that's the end of study. When I, I love the fact that he calls it study. I know. Because and he's it's got a, a bunch of studies. It's a very, it's a very classical right. term. Right. It's a very easy way to put it. And whenever you're looking at it, actually, in the realm of experimental music, whenever whenever you consider people like John Cage, Philip Glass, you, you know, oh, some of the greats of experimental yeah. music, um, they really work in the realm of study. Yeah. Um, and it's really, the concept of it is the fact of um, we're going to use this sound or this effect and see how far we can take right. it. Yeah. We're going to see yeah. how far we can stretch this and what we're able to do with it. It's truly a study in what you're able to do with that right. sound and that concept. So it's interesting that he starts off with study one and study two and then goes into stuff and then comes back to studies. Uh -huh. He comes back to studies. My favorite, huh. my favorites of the track are the studies because yeah. the studies is literally his... Uh, the whole dialogue that we were talking about before, taking yeah. the sound and substituting the effects and yeah. making a pre-sound. It's, it's really it. you that's can, what his studies are. You can are. really, especially once you hear study one, study two, and then you hear the next two tracks, you can really hear where he's drawn these techniques from the studies. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and break into a little bit of study two at this point and hear what we're talking about here. Here's here's study two, which is track two on the album. Done on purpose in the track, ladies and gentlemen. Not a skip. No. Not a skip. Done purposefully. Mm -hmm. So keep listening. where you can really really hear him practicing with the sound you can really hear him 
trying to dial something in. You can hear him rehearsing with it. You can hear a band rehearsing in the background also. <laughs> but uh, you can really hear him playing with it and trying to figure out how he's going to control it, what he's going to do with it, how long he's going to use it. Um, and it's... Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, I really feel like he is... He, he's taking, like, the, the effects... The, the filters he's using to get rid of the shit that the band doesn't want. Yeah. And he is now in his room listening to that. Yeah. And and into his mind and into his soul, he's like, this is beautiful. This is something that I could actually sit back and listen to. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because we were talking about albums and tracks made out of run out tracks. Right. Things like that earlier, you know, just esoteric sound pieces. Mm -hmm. And this is really and truly a study in sound. Mm -hmm. like I did an album years ago called Studies in Sound that was made up of different sounds in the world around us that make up different driving forces of humanity. Right. You know, um, and like there the was sound... a track on war. There right. was a track on construction. Right. And, and that little sound you get right now, it yeah. really feels like a cello. Yeah. You yeah. know? Oh, and that and that that it closes does. out. It does sound it does. That closes out study too. Yeah, and it's it's amazing because yeah, you can hear him like melding these things together and bringing them together. And, and making you know, like you said, yeah, you know? absolutely making sounds out of right. It. Um, that's a hard very, work on its own, right? Very there, melting all of that. Right. Um, yeah, right. just to just to find a use for the sound in and of itself is challenge as a musician and an engineer. Um, and, uh, you know, let's let's go ahead and move from that into uh, the next track, the third track, which is actually uh, Spirits in a Mineral World, which is quite enjoyable. I love this. Yeah, it's great. This is a great track. It's great. So let's go ahead and cue that up. And... <laughs> Listening to this, like I don't hear. There's a that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. There's a, a kind of a harmony on top of that. Yeah. That's really high, and it's on an off rhythm. Of it. And you can't hear that. You can kind of hear it in the right speaker a little bit. 
it's harder to hear with those square waves. But yeah, it's it's there. It's just it's not as present. It's interesting that you say that because I remember distinctly one of the first albums that I ever got when I started quote unquote collecting vinyl, so to speak. Um, one of the first albums that I got was one of my favorite albums on CD, Grateful Dead Shakedown Street. Mm. And I knew that album backward and forward on CD, every song, mm -hmm. knew it backward and forward. And I remember my brother being in the room and we were listening to it on vinyl. And I kept stick, skipping it back and skipping it back. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, you don't hear that? Yeah. Like in the left, in the left speaker. Right, right, right. right. Like, yeah. There is like some freaking stoned hippie like 30 feet away from the microphone in the freaking <laughs> studio playing a maraca. Really? For sure, dude. Yeah. Nice. Analog sound is because, great. Because when it was converted from yeah. analog to digital, that right. was compressed out as background it out. sound. Yeah. It was yeah. so soft. Right. right. But in analog, you could hear it. You right. could hear it. Well, for and instance. It's amazing. And it's that's crazy. what I love yeah. about vinyl. That's oh, what yeah. I love yeah. about it. My Morning Jacket, uh, their album Z, which is an incredible fucking album. Uh, I own a copy of it, but uh, the... The monthly subscription that I am involved in, uh, Vinyl Me yep. Please, is redoing it, so I'm cool with that. I love extra copies. Yeah. But there's one track, and I don't... My Morning Jacket fans, don't criticize me. I'm sorry. I can't remember the name of the track. But there's yeah, this run out, I know. There's this run out <laughs> where it's just this guitar and uh, drums just doing this, and bass just doing this real melodic, like, yeah. slow tempo. And there's this um, an uh, vocal that's reversed. Mm -hmm. And you're listening to it, and you're hearing it in reverse, and it does this reverse uh, for about 25 seconds, and then it does this, uh, and then it stops. Yeah. And on the CD, you can barely hear it. You can hear something going on, like someone's yeah. talking, and then if you really listen to it, you can realize, oh, someone's talking, but it's in reverse. Yeah. But on, on vinyl, you can hear everything just fucking solid. That's what I'm talking about. And you're yeah, like, yeah. wow, he just said strawberry in reverse. Yeah. And then you go and Google it, and it tells you exactly what they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, analog Dude, is, it's awesome. an amazing thing. It really, it really is. is. Sony does technology research very frequently on the best analog and the best digital, and they actually put people on EKG meters on their brain. They they record their brainwave patterns listening to a live session. Mm -hmm. And then they come back later, months later, and sit the same people down and hook them up to the same brainwave meter and then play them the music in the best analog and the best digital and see which brainwaves consistently match up to the live recording, to mm -hmm. when they heard that live. Mm -hmm. And consistently they get better results out of analog than they do digital. Well... Um, I mean, because you're actually, it's not a one and zero assumption of the sound. It's not a one and zero anymore. No. It, it's, it's it is the vibrations. physical sound. It's that magnetic it's on, tape. on tape, you're you're influencing rust particles with a magnetic it's field. A physical. In in vinyl, we were talking about earlier before the show. It's the fact of that platter of vinyl has a groove dug into it, and there's a tiny little diamond particle that vibrates with that groove against a metal plate. That creates an electromagnetic field that it's is science. that turns into the ones and zero. It's science. Yeah, at yeah. That it's point. a piezoelectric element. Yeah, and it's exactly. It's interesting. It yeah, works the same I, way as a guitar pickup right, does on ass, a bridge. Because I use a movable magnetic yeah. cartridge, which is considered piezo, yep. piezoelectric. Yeah, which is something that's vibrating at a certain frequency. Yeah, and the exactly. faster it vibrates, it the, the sound it well, gets, and it has no fluctuation from low to high. It will vibrate as fast as it needs to. When you take something digital, you're just dealing with ones and zeros at that point. You don't have it's binary code. Yeah, that, yeah. You don't have yeah. twos. Yeah. yeah. It's one and zero. It's zero 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 one zero 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 or and, zero zero one 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 zero. And the computer zero. is going to use the ones and zeros to make the best assumption for the sound that it just heard. Right, right. And you know what the keyword is? It's assumption. Assumption. Is what you just said. Assumption. And that's what computers and, do. And, and that's just you got it. those algorithms, now, you so got let's, limits. We're gonna jump lows. a few tracks ahead. We've only got about fifteen minutes left in the episodes. So we're going to jump a few tracks ahead, folks. Please, we encourage you, go out, find this album, Effacer, Music for Noise Reduction. Tell can, them where they can find it. You can find it on asmetickitty.com, which is the record label that uh, produced this album. They have this whole library catalog of all different albums. You can also find it at Discogs, and you can also find it at oldies.com, which is another record place. Oldies.com has a little bit cheaper than Asmetic Kitty. 
uh, Discogs. But you can also get it on the digital version. You can also download a digital. If you go to Asthmatic Kitty, you can download a digital for, I think, what, eight bucks? Something like that. You can buy it on vinyl for 13 which is still a fucking deal. Listeners, if you have a record player, oh God, please get a good platter. Please don't buy Crosley. If you're gonna, <laughs> I've got gonna, a, I've there's got a, a reason why yes, he's If you're going to get a vinyl player, get a mm. Technics or anything else, don't get Crosley. Do your research. YouTube, Vinyl Eyes is a great guy to watch. Um, anyways. It's cheap. You can get it. I saw a Kingwood today for like six Interesting bucks. fact. I didn't know until today. Dennis Moninger of Nomad Sound. I love you, buddy. Hope you're having a good time in the Czech Republic. I found this huge chunk of obsidian in my backyard. Dude. At the new house. What? They moved to Czech? Because Dude. No, no, no. He's just there doing some stuff Look and at things that like piece. that. That's a but good I put side. this on and he was like, did you know that the uh, plinel on, is, is it the plinel? What's it called on a on a record player? Like the big platter that sits underneath the turntable and everything. It's made of obsidian. Some Technics and stuff like that. The really? big black part yeah. underneath the turntable itself that's the weight of it is made of obsidian. Really? Really? Yeah, really? and I did not know that until today. I didn't know And either. thank you very much for that tidbit, because I love knowing what rocks and minerals are used for. Right. And on that note, we're going to get into the next track on this. Um, which has nothing at all to do with rocks and minerals. It's called Not Enough Information, and this is actually track seven on the album. So check it out, folks. saying this album is so entirely good it's it's great from beginning to end it is it's something totally different too like I, I was it was really interesting today because amy is not really one typically given to this kind of music like i make a lot of strange music um and i'll show her stuff and she'll be like yep sounds creepy and then she'll leave. <laughs> but when she heard this she was like this is really good really i like this a lot yeah, oh, yeah, like she was there good. the whole day listening to it with me. Nice. Like, yeah, and you know, she thoroughly enjoyed her listening time with it. And to hear that from her was like, that's great. You know, because there is some really interesting musical concept going on with this stuff. Even with what you're hearing right now, you know, the, the straight distorted. I, th I think it also like kind of like uh, soothes uh, a person. You know, it's like a good mood that it puts you in, kind of like. Yeah. Or a calming mood. You know, yeah. Tommy, you know. Yeah. It's really nice just to kick back and listen to yeah. it. Yeah, I have like I have um, a certain records that I will put on when I'm either reading or playing video games. Yep. Um I have certain records that if I'm in an uplift mood, you know, I will put these on. Yeah. If I'm in you know Same uh, here. Um, um, an Same obscured here. mood, I have yeah. my obscured yeah. records. And yeah. then I have my my melodic records. Like last night. I put on uh, Christening for Listening by Stephen Halpern. Hell yeah. Then dude. I put this nice. on uh, by Facer. Then I have a couple, uh, you know, Czechless Slovakian records that are jazz. I've definitely got my mood music. And exactly. I, I'll admit my go-to, my right. go-to, go-to, Pink Floyd. All yeah. day long. Nice. And it trips Amy Mama's out. Over there. Um, because, <laughs> because she's literally seen me before um, go for three days straight. Right. Listening, and it's it's my Pink Floyd mix on my Windows Media Player, but it's literally every single Pink Floyd album. Yeah, nice. Everything that they, their entire catalog. Right. And she's like, you don't get tired of this. And I'm like, 
Nope. No. No. Never. No. No. Never. No. I don't, th- I don't think I I've really been. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've I've definitely got that music that when I'm in that mood, like that's what I listen to. Right. And you know, it's interesting because this has definitely hit my rotation. Like this, this work today, dude. I thank you so much because, like I oh, said, yeah. this for our first conversation about this was the first night you were on the friggin' podcast. Right. Wow. First night. Oh, ever. Is that far I think back? It was. Yeah. Wow. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was. It's interesting. And, you know, it's interesting that, yeah, it comes a year yeah. around that we finally started Vinyl Night. Uh, <laughs> we talked time. about it. We, yeah, yeah, it does. It takes time to develop a concept sure. and really think about how you're going to do it and what you're going to do with well, it. Well, and know? what we're doing as a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, we were still we were still in baby steps in defining ourselves as a show. Right. Uh, and trying to figure out how we are going to save the world 12 ounces at a time. <laughs> um, you yeah. know, and we're still figuring that out. By yeah, drinking you know, 12 more. Sometimes it's enlightening stuff like this that teaches you to appreciate something different in life. Sometimes it's political stuff. Sometimes it's talking about other stuff. Right. So, you know, as much as that is, you know, I'm still at the age of 40 figuring out my musical tastes. Like, I find myself now listening to classical music. Like, I posted on Facebook last week, just before we moved to the new house, Stephen, before you helped me. I posted on Facebook, I'm probably the only dude trucking around Texas right now in my my full-size Ram pickup truck jamming classical music. Jamming classical. You know? Right. Like... (laughs) Oh, I remember... Dude, in high school, I was at a red light one time, and it had Vivaldi Four Seasons, and I'm pretty sure I was playing Summer, which is one of my favorites. And I'm like... Like doing well, like the whole like the the horns I got the yeah. horns up and I'm like headbanging and I got my windows down it's like do, 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 and then people are looking at me like what the fuck is this kid doing and I'm like dude this music is fucking bomb you know, it's like it's like he's been snorting grape coupon <laughs> oh, where's that grape coupon man I so, wish I had classical music today because while I was out running around all over town today oh it's a world all the crazy dude. drivers and it stuff, calms you down you know yeah exactly it like I mean. Job. It, it, it's kind of like you need that in Austin. You need some... Yeah. Uh, 89.5, man. That's if it, you yeah. ever need it, 89.5. You know, I'm like, oh, you, oh yep. you just cut me off? Oh, that's cool, so, man. That's cool. Speaking of that, like we said earlier, he does a lot of studies in this. We're going to listen to the last study here, study five, yes. which is actually track nine. It's the next to last track. We're going to do the last two tracks here. We're going to listen to a couple minutes of this, come back, talk to it, listen to the last couple... Then we're gonna let y'all go, folks. But I like study listen five. to listen to study five. It's some great stuff. He goes some great places with it. So check it out. On the classical note, study five from a facer. Music for noise reduction. <laughs> is so entirely surreal to me. Um, The string work in it is absolutely amazing. 
and you can really hear, like I was saying, that work on the artifacting that he was doing in study one and study two, and how he's really honed it. Um, well, what's even more inspiring is listening to this track and look at these rocks you gave us. Man. I just like I feel like I'm looking through the rock. At now, this Chris, point. did this yeah. come from your backyard? Yes, it did. Wow. Yeah, man. So the Dude. people who owned my house were rock hounds. They that's still right, are. That's right. And today, while I was doing the walk around, you know, getting all the stuff for the leasing agent, like, hey, there's this, there's this, there's this. I'm noticing all these little round rocks like that. And I looked at one, and it looked like that. And I'm like, holy crap, that's an agate slice. Yeah, it's so smooth. And I looked, and there are these little things all over my backyard. And they're literally little chunks of geode that weren't fully formed. So these guys, because they slice it away, it's a geode, they're going to see if it's fully formed on right. the inside. You don't know until you cut it. Geodes are basically a concretion of minerals that get compacted in dirt and become mud. And then what happens is an air pocket forms with water, and those minerals form crystals wow. inside of it. And as, as, it, as it hardens on the outside, the pressure builds up, builds up more heat. And how that many gas years expands millions. Yeah, yeah. And what what you're seeing right now becomes a hollow mineral with crystals inside of it. So those agate slices that you see would eventually become agate crystal and would become quartz. The white that you see is quartz, the red that you see is agate. And I found these things all over my backyard. I found this huge chunk of obsidian like right next to my patio. Hey, look at that. So I literally had to post on Facebook today like I found this good, good, calcite concretion that's like the size of a human brain really and one twice the size like i literally posted i have to stop looking because i will run out of treasures like i want my guests to come to my house and find, like, find a treasure in the backyard wow. you know whenever they come over and that's really that's what like cool ass this backyard. song dude, this song reminds me a lot of that feeling it reminds it me it, really it, re it reminds me a lot of a point of discovery yes um, What's the name it, of the track again? It is called Study Five. Study this five. is Study Five. That that was the the last study in in the series. I just feel like Study Five is just it speaks so much. Yeah, it's yeah. such a beautiful. Track. It, it is. It is, and it's a great concept, and it's great to hear him evolve that style over the different parts. Now. Um, for the, we're going to listen to about a minute or so of Dehumanize Yourself, with this, which is the final track. Yeah, that's the so closing let's check track this on this out. Really? And to me, this track is really interesting because basically what you're listening to is like the the muted track of a marimba well, is what it sounds like to me. Like the part that isn't the tone that's the boom yeah. of the marimba, but the actual strike of the wood, right. like the, the tink of the, of the key against the bell underneath, you know? If if this track oh, yeah, was here now, if this track was the first track to side A, and I listened to this before I bought the record, I would never buy it. Yeah. But for this track to be the last track on side B, it makes me want to flip the fucking record over and listen to it again. Yeah, like this yes. is the best yes. outro track of of this uh, yeah. of this kind of obscured yeah. music. I mean, this is just. It's so delicious. It's so delicate. It is. It sucks you in. It's luscious. I mean, and we're talking over it, but if you listeners listen to this, just like listen and like absorb it. It's just so fan fucking tastic. It's 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 literally epic. Epic. It's so. It's, it's and so but on vinyl when that that like yeah. that on vinyl with some good speakers that I got. 
you know, and listeners again, you know, my whole setup turned to everything speakers. under eleven hundred dollars. You don't need to go out and spend no, anything crazy. No, you don't. Crazy. You don't. And that's just it. Like, people don't realize that. You I know, tell that to people. You know, for the price that you're going to pay for a TV, you can do a whole audiophile yeah, setup. exactly. And, and get the delicious sound that you need. The warmth, yep. the coziness, the highs and the lows that are just going to literally all about your body It's all about, it's all about body two, if you can get tube amplification, yes. that's a plus. Well, and see, I'm not even running tube. No, no. You just have Everything to have a good soft. receiver. You've yes. got to have a good receiver. Uh, good and stuff. It's, it's essential. And we need to do a whole episode on different audio setups, different ways you can set stuff Pros up. Pros and cons. Pros shit, and cons. Record, stuff like players, that. Yes. That, would be, that would be a fantastic yeah, episode. Yeah, I would love to do that. And let's please, that, let's that please make that That last track that we just that. listened to yeah. kind of reminded me, it kind of like mimicked the... the the experience I had once with the, like the neurophone uh, things in my head, yeah, um, that uh, like where the music's actually in your head, and the one thing that 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 kind of gave me that experience out of that track was that kind of like that knocking sound, yeah, dunk, while everything else was playing, the, yeah, and it almost seemed like it was kind of like in one ear, and then sometimes yep. it might have veered off to the other one, yeah. And um, it, yeah. it, it totally gave that experience a little yep. bit of like it was in my head. Kinda. Well, and it, it kind of like, kind of like you were listening to the music. And on that note, everybody, that's going to be it for this episode of Dudes and Beer, our first vinyl night. High Woo-hoo, five, guys! Yes. Yeah. Way to go! Way to make yeah, it happen! Yeah, Way yeah. to make it a reality! <laughs> yeah. And uh, on that. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks thank so you. much for a great first year. Thanks so Fuck much for yes. a great second launch for, to next year. Dudes and and we look forward to next Saturday to the live broadcast Woo! from yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> from the Blast to the Past cruise in with West Houston Muscle. And until then, everybody, take care. If you can't be good, be, be good, good at it. it. You've been listening to the Dudes and Beer Podcast. Visit us online at www.dudesandbeer.com. Find our audio streams on soundcloud.com and spreaker.com forward slash dudes and beer. Follow us on Facebook forward slash dudes and beer. Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly.